first news of 94 is the announcement in Paris that Olivier Beretta will partner Eric Comas at LaRousse as the team switches from Lamborghini to Ford V8 Power. FIA President Max Mosley warns that the consequences for any team or driver found cheating will be, quote, mind-blowing, end quote, in the coming season. Mark Blundell lands the Tyrrell drive alongside Cassie Armour. It's nice to come to Tyrrell, it's nice to come to an English team, obviously an Englishman. At Silverstone, the new Jordan Hart B194 stuns Rubens Barrichello on its debut. Benetton announced that JJ Leto will partner Michael Schumacher and also sign young Dutchman Jos Verstappen. The new Benetton is the first of the big four to be out testing. It's not all hard work as Madonna di Campiglio in Italy plays host to the annual skiing get-together. It's here that rumours circulate to the effect that Prost will test a McLaren Peugeot during the first week of February. Frank Williams is adamant that Prost cannot race for another team, effectively being still under contract to Williams. On paper at least, Senna and Williams are hot favourites for 94, but Ayrton is under no illusions. Under no illusions, that's going to be an easy, an easy thing because it's going to take a lot of effort to get used with a new machine and new people and new team of mem team members and uh, I am ready to start the work. Damon Hill is upbeat and looking forward to the season ahead. Thrilled to bits to have Ayrton in the team with me and um, I'm really looking forward to this year. Martin Brundle has no idea who he'll be driving for but it's no secret he's after a McLaren seat. Fittipaldi lands the footwork deal on his 23rd birthday. Leto crashes at Silverstone in his first test since signing for Benetton. He's removed unconscious to Northampton Hospital with fractured vertebrae in his neck. Eddie Irvine signs for the second Jordan seat. At a sunny Estoril, Senna and Coulthard in FW15Ds, Irvine in the new Jordan, Frenson and Wendlinger in the new Sauber, and Zanardi and Herbert in Lotuses are joined by Bernard in the Ligier. Predictably, it's a light-hearted and relaxed Senna. It's a rather soft. And he emerges fastest at the end of his first week with the Williams team. At McLaren's Woking HQ, the new Peugeot engined MP49 is launched and Ron Dennis is pressed on Prost. And as far as we're concerned, he just represents a driver who has won three world championships of his four world championships in a McLaren. And of course, that inevitably makes him extremely suitable uh, as regards his driving for McLaren in 1994. Ferrari's new John Barnard design 412T1 is launched to a rapturous media reception at Maranello. Whilst Christian Fittipaldi does the honours for Footworks FA15 at a murky Silverstone. Ken Tyrrell is joined by Harvey Postlethwaite at Olympia to unveil the new Tyrrell Yamaha 022. Michael Schumacher is in scintillating form in Spain and is joined by new boy Jos Verstappen. You know, I did only two years of uh, motor racing and then now I jump in to the Formula One as a test driver. Uh, it is all going very fast for me, but uh, I, uh, I can handle it, sure. Schumacher's Benetton is looking ominously quick. We don't know what other teams have done. I think we have done a good job. Depends uh, what the other teams have done. Maybe they have done even a better job. I don't, I don't hope so. Somebody will win and somebody will lose. Some people say that Heinz Harald Frensen is even quicker than Schumacher. I think we are a new generation and there's good to give us a chance to get into Formula One. I think it's time to, to beat them. Frensen has a strong teammate in Austrian, Karl Wendlinger. Ron Dennis fixes the long-expected Prost test in the hope of sorting a race deal and claims that when Alain tests, he will do so as a free agent. Mika Hakkinen, meanwhile, continues to develop the new McLaren Peugeot MP49. Martini and Alboreto are confirmed at the reformed Minardi team. Pacific Grand Prix is new to Formula One. The initial stage, the first stage is the first two races, we just want to do a good performance and finish the races. And then, obviously, as soon as we've achieved that, we'll want the next stage, which is to try and be regularly in the top ten. Bertrand Gachot and Paul Belmondo are the two drivers chosen for the task.
Another new team for 94 is Simtech. Driver David Brabham rates their chances. I think we'll, we, we could be up there and have a few surprises. We're going to have ups and downs, but I'd like to think that towards the end of the season, we'll get a, a lot more competitive and um, hopefully, you know, get the odd point now and then. 1994 sees the reintroduction of refueling during pit stops, and in Spain, the Jordan team are the first to try out the new equipment. Another new change is the banning of traction control. Mika Hakkinen used the Barcelona tests to repeatedly practice his race starts. Footwork announced that Gianni Morbidelli will partner Christian Fittipaldi. Simtech announced Roland Ratzenberger as their second driver, despite this little indiscretion at the Variante Bassa. Happily, Leto is back and seemingly recovered from his Silverstone accident. He's unlikely for Brazil, though. Portuguese Pedro Lamy joins Johnny Herbert in the Lotus Mugen, an update of last year's car. One major question remains unanswered, however. Who will partner Mika Hakkinen at McLaren? Alain Prost, Philippe Alio, or Martin Brundle? After a four-day test in Estoril, it's Brundle who gets the nod for Brazil. Alio isn't ruled out, and Prost announces on French television that he will not be returning to Formula One in 1994. The pre-season driver's weigh-in, carried out incidentally with the drivers in full race kit, complete with helmet, Bertrand Gachot emerges heaviest at a hefty 81 kilograms, whilst the two lightweights for 94 are Morbidelli and Frentzen at 62. The difference could be worth as much as half a second a lap. Senna is intrigued to know what he's up against. How much does Demon weigh? Who's the heaviest? Gachot. Gachot. At 1 p.m. local time, March 25th, 1994, the first of the season's official action begins. It's a new experience for the Pacific and Simtech teams whose first battle will be to qualify their cars for the race. Michael Schumacher, who is joined by Josh Verstappen for Brazil in place of the injured Leto, puts up a fight in qualifying against local hero Senna, but winds up second fastest. Senna isn't happy with the handling of the new FW16. A year ago, the difference was with the electronic suspension, the cars were riding the bumps a bit better. Now, with the normal suspension, it is very difficult for setting up the cars and getting the cars to ride smooth over the bumps. But he still emerges fastest in every session to claim pole position. Hill takes fourth. The new McLaren is down in eighth and 18th spot with throttle problems. Burgers Ferrari suffers technical troubles, keeping him back in 17th spot, while Jean Alesi manages to haul his understeering car up to third, albeit over a second shy of the front row. One more second covers another 10 cars, down to Comas in 13th. The new rules have definitely closed things up. For the crowd, only one thing dominates their thoughts, the prospect of another Senna victory. At the green, Senna gets away first. Schumacher is passed by Alesi and drops to third. And Hakkinen is quickly up two places into sixth. With Schumacher held up, Senna immediately opens up a gap to Alesi. Lab two and Schumacher eases past the Frenchman after a couple of unsuccessful earlier attempts. So Senna is first, four seconds ahead. Schumacher is second and Alesi third. Lab 14, McLaren awaits Brundle as Senna and Schumacher pull well clear of the rest of the field. 
Lap 15, McLaren become the first team to make a fuel and tyre stop. Time, 10.3 seconds. Lap 21, Senna and Schumacher come in together. The pit crews will decide who leads. Benetton proved the faster, handing the lead to Schumacher with Senna now second. Lap 34, Verstappen and Irvine are trying to lap Bernard and all are bearing down on a slowing Brundle. Amazingly, no one is seriously injured. With both Senna and Schumacher having made a further pit stop each, the gap settles at a little over nine seconds with the Benetton having the advantage. That is until Senna pushes a little too hard on lap 56. Senna stalls the engine and is an instant retirement. Schumacher is now on his own at the front and goes on to score a convincing victory. Damon Hill finishes second and Jean Lacy third. Michael Schumacher is delighted. Irvine receives the wrath of the stewards for this incident, giving him a one-race ban and a $10,000 fine. The Jordan team serves notice of its intention to appeal against the stewards' decision. Other news, Jean Alessi injures his back in a Ferrari testing accident at Mugello. Williams tests at Jerez in an effort to sort out the problem's experience with the FW16 in Brazil. At the FIA Court of Appeal in Paris, Irvine's one-race ban is increased to three. Roland Ratzenberger hasn't yet started a race in Formula One, but he has raced at Aida in Japan, something that none of the other Formula One drivers have done. He explains what it's like. It's a nice little facility. It's very clean and, and brand new, basically. For the Pacific Grand Prix, Aguri Suzuki takes over Irvine's Jordan, while Nicola Larini stands in for Jean Alesi. Compared to last year's championship winning car, the Williams FW16 is proving problematical for Hill and Senna, both drivers struggling to find a suitable handling balance. Williams designer Patrick Head is quite open on the subject. We're certainly not happy with the way uh, things are with the car right as they are at the moment. Uh, the handling isn't uh, particularly good. The two Benettons, however, are looking good, but team boss Flavio Briatori is cautious. Now is the second race, and uh, tomorrow I start in the first grid, and uh, it's quite good. But it's uh, our possibility for the world champion, honestly, I don't know. Williams a very, very strong package. The two Ferraris are suffering from a lack of rear end grip and wearing a set of tyres in a single lap. Qualifying sees Berger and Marini fifth and seventh. Hakkinen manages to wreck an under tray and damage the underside of a monocoque on his way to fourth on the grid, while Brundle does much the same on his way to sixth spot. For Senna, it's another Williams pole position. Despite a spin, teammate Damon Hill is third fastest and Schumacher's Benetton second. Race day, Benetton's Briatori and a pensive Senna. the green, Schumacher makes an unbelievable getaway, as does Hakkinen, who tips Senna into a spin and Marini has nowhere to go. Both drivers are out, both are angry. So Schumacher leads from Hakkinen, scarred McLaren and a charging hill in the second, Williams anxious to get past the fin and stay in touch with the lead. Further back, Berger's Ferrari is fourth, 
but Hill goes off in his attempts to pass Hakkinen on lap four and rejoins in ninth position. Undeterred, he immediately passes Verstappen on lap five, Frensen on lap six, Fittipaldi on lap eight, Brundle on lap 11, and Barrichello on lap 12 to move up into fourth place. Lap 18, and Hill is in for a fuel tyre stop, the Williams team producing the quickest stop so far. He rejoins in 10th, by lap 26 he's into 5th and challenging Berger for 4th. Brundle and Barrichello make their stops, Hill passes Berger and he's into 2nd until lap 50 when he retires with transmission problems. Lap 53, Verstappen in the 2nd Benetton makes his final stop and promptly spins in front of Frensen at the first corner. Lap 69 and Brundle retires with a dead engine, so Barrichello's 3rd, Berger hangs on to 2nd and Schumacher collects another win. These two wins. I wouldn't believe at all if anybody would tell me this before the season. Rubens Barrichello and the whole Jordan team are visibly over the moon. It's Rubens' first ever podium finish and fittingly it's Jordan's 50th Grand Prix. I just had a problem on the last pit stop because the engine died and I was fourth. I said I, I, I can't believe that you know it's not today that I'm going to the podium but suddenly I saw Brando stopping and you know. I'm just really, really pleased for me and for the team because they, they've done a, a really good job. Andrea de Cesaris lands the second Jordan seat in place of Eddie Irvine, who still has two races left to run on his Brazilian ban. Jean Alessi's return is put back until after the San Marino GP. Nicola Larini will again substitute for the recovering Frenchman. Benetton's JJ Leto is happy to be back for San Marino, now fully recovered from his serious pre-season testing accident. Benetton test driver Jos Verstappen is less enthusiastic. Ayrton Senna and Damon Hill have a heavily revised Williams FW16 for Imola in an effort to close the gap on Benetton and in particular this man, Michael Schumacher. The Ferraris are on their home ground at Imola and the adoring Tifosi have waited too long for a Ferrari win, let alone on home ground. Senna, pleased with the revised aerodynamic package of the Williams, sets a provisional pole position lap of 1 minute 21.548 seconds during Friday afternoon's official qualifying. Then... Rubens Barrichello goes off at the Variante Bassa. Teammate Eddie Irvine describes how Rubens caught the tire wall to the anxious Jordan team. I think he just caught the very top of the, top, the, the, the last maybe row or something, you know, the last one, and then that sort of threw him like this, and it hit the wall, and then the whole side came off, and then it rolled a couple of times, but his head never hit anything. His arm was out and all that, but I think he was knocked out the initial yeah. whack. He's shocked, of course, but he's all okay, A very fortunate Barrichello will be back at the circuit on Saturday afternoon with a fractured nose, bandaged arm and cut lip as the Valianta Bassa continue to catch out the drivers during qualifying. Saturday, Schumacher is intent on closing the gap to Senna's provisional pole time and three laps sees him within three tenths of a second. The San Marino Grand Prix, however, takes a tragic turn. 31-year-old Austrian driver Roland Ratzenberger in the Simtek leaves the circuit at the flat-out Villeneuve Kink on the approach to Tosa.
It was the first time that I find myself shaking after accident. I was sitting in the car, I watched it on the, on the monitor, and when they start to put him out of the car, I could see that it's gonna be very, very bad. And of course, in, in our job, you are sometimes a bit prepared to see situations like this. But as it was another Austrian driver, as it was a personal contact to a person, it's even worse. And I know you should not make a difference between a driver what you know and a driver what you don't know, but it affects you in a different way. Sunday morning, Elton Senna and Gerhard Berger discuss driver safety. This is the first meeting that will eventually lead to the reformation of the Grand Prix Drivers Association. Elton Senna, Gerhard Berger and Michael Schumacher are the prime movers. With Ratzenberger's accident still uppermost in everyone's minds, the cars duly line up for the race. Bravely, David Brabham and the Simtek team choose to continue. As the lights switch to green, it's Senna who gets away first, as JJ Leto in the Benetton stalls on row three and is quickly collected by the unsighted Pedro Lamy in the Lotus. With Lamy unhurt and Leto receiving a light arm injury, it's a flying wheel from the Lotus that vaults the spectator fence, injuring eight fans and a policeman that is the major cause for concern. As the rest of the field pours into Tosa, the decision is taken to bring out the safety car. Picking up the cars at the start of the second lap, the safety car controls the field until the end of lap five, whilst the marshals clear the wreckage from the start line. The safety car having peeled off into the pit lane, we rejoin the race at the start of lap six, with Schumacher a close second behind Senna. Through Tamburello, sparks fly from the rear end of the Williams, and we join Ayrton Senna on board for what would be his last lap.
Despite an overwhelming sense of tragedy, the field takes the restart some 45 minutes later. At this stage, the true gravity of Senna's situation is unknown. At the green, Berger's Ferrari gets the jump on Schumacher from Hill, Hakkinen, Lorini in the second Ferrari, Wendlinger and Katayama. Through Tamburello and round into Tosa, the red Ferrari stays in front as the Tafosi pack stands erupt in a sea of flags, hooters and waving arms. Their joy would last for 10 laps when a mistake on the exit of Aqua Minerale would be all that Schumacher needed to take back the lead. Soon after, Berger heads for the pits and retirement, the official reason being that there's a problem with the left rear of the car. The San Marino Grand Prix would have one more nasty twist. Michele Alboreto's Minardi loses its right rear wheel as he leaves the pit lane following his second stop. The flying wheel knocks down three Ferrari mechanics and one from Lotus. All are injured, but none seriously. Oblivious to it all, Schumacher leads from Nicola Larini's Ferrari and Mika Hakkinen now in third in the McLaren Peugeot. Rounding out the final top six places to the flag are Wendlinger, Katayama and Damon Hill. A somber Michael Schumacher speaks afterwards. What happened this week and never have seen something like this. Not just one thing, so many things. The only thing I can say about this is I hope we learn from this. I think there is a lot to learn from and we have to use this and things like this, they shouldn't happen without taking the experience from it. And perhaps spare a thought for second place, Nicola Larini. I'm happy with my result. It's my best result in my career and could be the last one because um, uh, next race, Alesi will take his car, and, uh, but I'm, I'm happy for uh, the other things. The FIA is quick to issue a statement following the tragic accidents at San Marino. The following day, Williams issues an official statement. The FIA announces a new pit lane speed limit of 50 miles an hour and will tighten the entrance and exits of the pit lanes. Severe penalties will be imposed on any driver breaking the speed limit. Max Mosley takes the opportunity to reject media speculation over the possible cause of Senna's accident, but does put forward the current hypothesis on the cause of Ratzenberger's fatal crash. A state funeral is held in honour of Ayrton Senna on Thursday, May 5th. It follows three days of official mourning. Nearly one million grieving Brazilians watch the funeral procession. As a mark of respect, both Williams and Simtek only enter one car each for Monaco. On the Wednesday prior to the Grand Prix, Gerhard Berger holds a press conference to announce his intention to continue in Formula One, ending speculation he may retire following the tragic deaths of Senna and Ratzenberger. I earned good money, I was driving in good teams, I was winning races, I had pole positions and the quickest lap. I've nothing, basically not a lot to prove. So, what is the point to take still risk what is every day involved in this job? And that was my question to myself all the last week. But the other side is, what, 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 what is the rest of your life? You, you love, you, basically you don't love anything others. I mean, I have a company at home. I, I would have a challenge in my company. But what I love is driving racing cars. During Thursday morning's first free practice session, Carl Wendlinger suffers a high-speed accident at the chicane. He is removed to hospital unconscious. Sauber withdraw Frensen's car from the event. The condition is serious but stable. After the telemetry data, Carl braked 13 meters later on that very lap. 
than on the previous fastest lap. On Friday morning, Nicky Lauda announces the reformation of the GPDA. At the drivers' meeting of today, we agreed to form the Grand Prix Driver Association. It was agreed that the, that the representatives of the GPDA will be Nicky Lauda, Michi Schumacher, Gerhard Berger and Christian Fittipaldi. The GPDA requests a representation and recognition within the FIA to improve the safety of Formula One. After a four-hour meeting, hey, you never talk. After a four-hour meeting, we discussed that we are to take immediate action to look at the next three Grand Prix circuits together with the FAA for possible improvement. For the next Grand Prix, which is Barcelona, we're going to reduce the size of the diffuser, we are going to raise the front wing, wing end plates, and we're going to restrict the size of the front wings. Now, the effect of that, for those who are not technical, is that the downforce on the car will immediately be reduced by something in the order of 15%. For the next race but one, which is Canada, we are going to firstly increase the lateral protection for the driver's head by increasing the size of the sides of the cockpit. Secondly, in order to allow the teams to do that without any difficulty from the point of view of weight or stre and strength, therefore, we're going to increase the minimum weight limit with effect from Canada for, by 25 kilos. Thirdly, we are going to bring in provisions for strengthening the front wishbones in a technical way which I won't trouble you with, but the effect of which will be to make it much less likely that a front wheel will become partially detached and strike the driver. Fourthly, we are going to lengthen the cockpits, try to avoid drivers striking their heads forward on the cockpit. Fifthly, we are going to change the fuel regulation and impose the use of pump petrol. And finally, we are going to remove the air boxes from the engines. This will have a, a, an, an additional effect on horsepower because, as you probably appreciate, the air boxes are put there to encourage the air to go into the engine. So those measures will all come into force for, that is to say, before, in time for, the Canadian Grand Prix. Monaco is a favourite among sponsors and its unique four-day schedule with qualifying on Thursday and Saturday leaves Friday free for the drivers and sponsors to get together at social events. Saturday morning. Mika Hakkinen puts in a blinding lap to edge himself into pole position ahead of Michael Schumacher's Friday best. Mika records a 1 minute 19.488 seconds lap. That's nearly eight tenths quicker than Schumacher and an improvement of over two seconds on Mika's Friday best. Burgers Ferrari goes third fastest. But Schumacher responds with a near perfect lap of 1 minute 18.580 seconds to take pole position by nearly a full second. It's a staggering performance by the young German. And just knew that this is the lap and uh, the, the tyres will perform 100%, and I'm going to make a big step out of uh, compared to the first lap. In the last corner, I came uh, really sideways and I lost quite a lot. Sunday, the front row of the grid is left empty and a minute's silence is held before the race in memory of Senna and Ratzenberger. At the ninth, Schumacher makes a clean getaway from pole position as Damon Hill hits Mika Hakkinen's McLaren on the entry to Sandervoort. The field scrambles up the hill towards Casino Square and McLaren is left stranded. An instant retirement along with a tangling Morbidelli and Martini. Schumacher leads from Berger, Alessi, Fittipaldi, Brundle and Blondell. Hill's 
race in the Sol Williams is over, a legacy of his contact with Hakkinen's McLaren. Lap 20, Schumacher leads, having lapped the entire field up to eight. Lap 40, and Berger is in second, ahead of Brundle's McLaren, until Blundell's engine lets go at Sandoval. I saw too late the, the, the all flag, and I lost about nine or ten seconds, and so Martin was just behind me. Brundle dives down the outside into Mirabeau, snatching second place. But he's a long way behind Michael Schumacher, who, barring any bad luck, will make it four wins out of four. Schumacher takes the win from Brundle, Berger, De Cesaris in the Jordan, Alessi and Alboreto's Minardi. Pedro Lamy becomes the first driver to pull foul of the 50 miles an hour pit lane limit, receiving a $5,000 fine. Lotus will debut its new 109 at Barcelona, one car being available for Johnny Herbert. Pedro Lamy has a massive testing accident at Silverstone, dislocating both legs and breaking his wrist. He's likely to be out for the rest of the year and will be replaced at Lotus by Italian Alessandro Zanardi. Eddie Irvine is back in Spain after his three-race ban from Brazil. Andrea Montemini gets the second Simtex seat alongside David Brabham. Heinz Harald Frensen will be Sauber's only representative in Barcelona as Carl Wendlinger makes steady progress in hospital following his Monaco practice accident. Williams test driver David Coulthard gets his chance in the second Williams seat. Frank Williams holds a press conference in Spain to explain the reasons for his choice. Beyond that, uh, he is uh, obviously very quick, but he's got a very um, uh, analytical head brain and uses that brain to analyze his car. And whenever he's tested for us, like Damon, he just made a lot of progress this is the first event since the formation of the Grand Prix well, Drivers uh, Association. And there still not safe enough for the improvement. A temporary the chicane is installed at the Nissan corner to slow the cars before the second gear La Caixa hairpin. Any possible help to, to improve it for this weekend in a kind of a compromise with another chicane before to slow the cars down. In Saturday morning's free practice session, Montemini runs wide on the exit of the last corner onto the start-finish straight with horrific consequences. He is very lucky to escape with a broken left heel and a broken right foot. With Saturday's afternoon qualifying session being cooler than Friday, it's Schumacher's Benetton that takes pole position with a lap of 1 minute 21.908 seconds. Hill is second, half a second behind, and Hakkinen third. The Circuit de Catalunya pays tribute to the late Ayrton Senna with a memorial unveiled by Bernie Eccleston at the circuit entrance. Sunday is sunny and warm. Schumacher gets the best start from Hill, Hakkinen, Alexi, Leto and Coulthard. The young German then proceeds to pull out a massive lead in the early laps. Lap 14, Berger runs wide, damaging the underside of the Ferrari. 25 laps later, Barrichello ends his race in a cloud of dust. Lap 41, Hill makes his second stop from the lead. Schumacher is in trouble. His car stuck in fifth gear. He explains the situation. The car was running perfect in the beginning. And then uh, suddenly I wanted to, to shift uh, into different gears and it uh, didn't want to do what I asked it to do. I don't know actually what really happened. I just uh, know that I finished then going in fifth gear. 
and unimpressed Bria Torre has to watch his young charge finish second for the first time this year, while Williams looks set for their first victory. Hackaden by now was making gains on Schumacher and challenging for second place. The McLaren Peugeot looking much better in Spain, but on lap 48 his engine would expire in a cloud of smoke. One lap to go, Hill enjoys a 20-second margin over Schumacher, Williams Renault on course to make up for the agony of the season so far. The loss of Leto and Brundle to engine failures moves Mark Blundell into third place to score his first points of the season. With only the last few corners remaining, it's a dominant win for Hill and a particularly emotional one for the Williams team. The entire pit lane happy to see someone other than Schumacher and Benetton take victory. Tearful scenes are best summed up by Damon after the race. This victory must go to everyone at Williams who have been through terrible times and also to all the fans of Ant Center who I met in Brazil who said to me that they would be very pleased to see the Williams team do well. By taking third place, Mark Blundell gives Yamaha their best ever result. It's been a tough year for me so far and for the team because I've put a lot of work in. It's great, uh, Terry Yamaha, third position. First podium for Yamaha, scored the first point from back in 91, so that's good. Damon Hill's win in Barcelona marks Goodyear's 300th Grand Prix victory. To celebrate the milestone, the company is presented with a trophy by Bernie Ecclestone. Next stop in the championship is Canada, round six, and that means a flyaway trip for the cars and equipment. With five rounds of the championship gone, Schumacher leads the driver's table with 46 points, from Hill with 17, Berger 10, Alesi 9, Barrichello 7, and Brundle and Marini tied in sixth spot with six points apiece. In the Constructors' Championship, Benetton Ford leads with 46 points, from Ferrari with 25, and Williams Renault 17. Montreal plays host to the annual Mechanics Raft Race. The object of the exercise is to cross the stretch of water, collect a wheel and tyre, and bring it back. The team from Simtex scores what could be its best result of the season, sixth. But it's the Jordan team that wins the race for the fourth year in succession, ahead of the Goodyear and Benetton teams, and Eddie Irvine is proud of his men. The Canadian Grand Prix sees a modified version of the changes to airboxes announced by the FIA in Monaco. The teams must now cut holes to reduce the ram effect, and they interpret the ruling in different ways. Also in for Canada are the strengthened lower front wishbones, the 15 kilo minimum weight increase and the use of pump fuel. Benetton have a new rear wing assembly, not unlike that of Williams, and Ferrari have revised side pods. For this year's race, a new chicane has been installed to slow the cars prior to the flat-out right-left kink that leads on to the start-finish straight. 
Andrea De Cesaris will start his 200th Grand Prix on Sunday for the Sauber team, joining Patrese and Piquet as the only members of the Grand Prix 200 club. John Alesi, meanwhile, celebrates his 75th Grand Prix and his 30th birthday. Qualifying. The McLaren team are still struggling with a lack of top-end power from the Peugeot engine. Martin Brundle posting 12th fastest time and Mika Hakkinen 8th. Damon Hill's Williams Renault would finish up 4th on the grid with his young teammate David Coulthard 5th, a little over one-tenth of a second behind. The two Ferraris clogged speeds of more than 190 miles an hour in Friday's qualifying session, markedly quicker than Katayama's Tyrrell, who's next up. It's enough to see Berger third on the grid with a time of 1 minute 27.059 seconds. Teammate Alesi holds provisional pole after Friday's session with a time of 1 minute 26.277. That cannot improve on Saturday and slips to second on the grid. That leaves Michael Schumacher's Benetton, and he takes his third pole position of the year with a time of 1 minute 26.178. The start, Schumacher takes what seems to be his cut lead into the first corner from a lacy second, Berger third and Coulthard fourth. Damon Hill is fifth. Coulthard soon finds out what it's like to be stuck behind a Ferrari. While Hill's not happy stuck behind Coulthard. The Williams closes under braking, the Ferrari disappears under acceleration. All this allows Schumacher to extend his lead. Lap 9, Coulthard waves Hill past. Laps later, Coulthard gets to see how it's done. Hill moves into third place and quickly pulls clear as he sets off in chase of a lacy second place Ferrari, which he moves ahead of on lap 31. Lap 61, Hakkinen doesn't make the chequered flag for the fifth time in six races. Schumacher does though and takes his fifth win in six races. Hill is second, a lacy third, Berger fourth, and David Coulthard fifth, receiving his first world championship points. Afterwards, Coulthard explains to Frank Williams why his pace dropped off after such an impressive start. I'm sorry about that. The first half, the, the first few laps, I was going well, and then I started to cook the tyres. And then after I let Damon go, I had a problem with the, this foot. I couldn't feel it, so I was having to brake with my heel. And if, I think this is because I've never done more than 35 laps in testing. Magna Cour, I did 35 laps, but never 68. So, you know, I apologise for this, but it's something I can improve on. Where did the cramp come in? Uh, after about 20 laps. Fittipaldi's footwork is excluded from sixth place in Canada for being one and a half kilos underweight. Ferrari introduce a heavily revised 412T1 in time for the French Grand Prix. Frenchman Jean-Marc Gounon takes over the second Simtex seat at Manicourt. Leto finds himself, quote, rested by Benetton in favour of the test driver Jos Verstappen. And for a one-off appearance in France, this man is back at williams Renault.
Mansell's impact is immediate. Despite only qualifying seventh fastest in Friday afternoon's session, everyone is intrigued to see what threat he may be, especially to Hill and Schumacher. The Jordan team paid deference to Ireland's World Cup success against Italy. Ferrari's heavily revised car is more to Berger's liking, and on Friday he's second fastest, but slips back to fifth on Saturday. John Alesi in number 27 is fourth on both days. Peugeot have a new engine for their home Grand Prix, but Hakkinen ends up ninth and Brundle twelfth. With 30 Grand Prix wins to his credit, Mansell is in France for more than just a publicity coup. The Williams FW16 has been a difficult car to set up, and his wealth of experience is of enormous benefit to Hill. Having set fastest time on Friday afternoon, it's Schumacher who holds provisional pole position, and on Saturday he improves his time by four tenths of a second. But the young German is on the limits and pushes just a bit too hard. It's time for the Williams pair of Mansell and Hill. Mansell puts in a 1 minute 16.359 to go fastest. Schumacher can only watch. But it's Mansell who has to watch as Hill goes out on his last set of tyres. One minute, 16.282, less than a tenth of a second faster than Nigel, but good enough for Damon to snatch pole. I'm proud to be sitting next to Damon here. I think it's great. It's the first time I've driven with a British driver as a teammate. And I can tell you, I've never been so proud because it's so satisfying, as Damon will know years ago, to push him and to see him do what he's done today. It makes me happy. Schumacher makes a remarkable getaway to berth through the front row into the lead. Alesi is fourth and further back, Brundle moves up from 12th to 8th. Into the Adelaide hairpin for the first time, Schumacher leads from Hill, Mansell, Alesi, Berger, Barrichello and Frensen. The opening laps are nose to tail for the front pair. is the first to stop. Lap 20, Zanardi's Lotus suffers a massive oil blaze at the rear. On lap 21, Schumacher makes the first of three stops, but never loses the lead. Damon Hill runs a comfortable second, stopping on laps 21 and 46, while Mansell is back in sixth position. Lap 41, Alesi overshoots into the gravel trap and spins over the curb across the circuit. As he tries to rejoin the race, he leaves Barrichello's fifth place Jordan nowhere to go. Both are out. Lap 46, Mansell retires from third place with terminal transmission problems. In the final few laps, any thoughts Hill has of closing the gap to Schumacher are thwarted by backmarkers. Berger will finish third, Frensen fourth, Martini fifth and De Cesare sixth. For Schumacher and the Benetton team, it's now six wins from seven starts. I was a bit worried yesterday after the performance we did and after the performance uh, Williams uh, showed to us. 
I was a bit worried for today. But after I'd known that uh, they have something, they have a special engine, especially for France, which gives them a bit of power, I became a bit more quiet. And as well, I knew I had a problem in my car, which I was pretty sure we were going to fix. And as you see, we did, and uh, everything became a bit more to normal. But uh, I have to say, it was a really tough fight in the beginning with Damon, very close racing. But uh, that's what we all enjoy. Carl Wendlinger is making good progress and makes known his desire to race again. Pedro Lamy is on the mend and could possibly drive again before the end of the year. Ferrari's new 75 degree V12 will make its debut in qualifying at the British Grand Prix. Ah, yes. On that basis, Ross, you could get a job with the New Zealand cricket team. Oh, thanks very much. <laughs> He wants to drive tomorrow with this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ukio Katayama makes his debut with a cricket bat in Northamptonshire. The rising young Japanese star is definitely safer behind a steering wheel, though. Friday, free practice. Berger is a spectator as his engine blows on his first lap out of the pit. Damon Hill's Silverstone weekend starts similarly. Without even having completed a lap of the first free practice session, the front suspension mounts fail. David Coulthard is back in a Williams after Mansell's run at Manny Cor. The World Cup tournament is progressing and Minardi have an answer for the Jordan team's quip in France. Princess Diana and the two young princes are at Silverstone. Visits to the Williams and Benetton pits proving a source of great interest. <laughs> Qualifying. Jean Alesi is one of the big four gunning for pole position on Saturday afternoon, having been third quickest on Friday. He improves his time to 1 minute 25.541. Berger is in sensational form, having missed all of Friday's free practice. He was second in the afternoon qualifying session on only his sixth flying lap. In the second session, he improves his time to 1 minute 24.980, pipping a lacy for pole. A lacy spin at Brooklands ends his challenge, and Berger loses his chance to consolidate his pole time when he hits the armco on the exit of the pit lane. Schumacher waits. Hill goes out for his last run as Williams designer Patrick Head loosens his collar. The Williams is visibly more committed through the sweeps of Maggots, Beckett's and Chapel. Schumacher sets off for his last run as Hill finishes his with a pole grabbing time of 1 minute 24.960, two one hundredths of a second quicker than Berger. It's now all eyes on the monitors and the Benetton to see if Schumacher can steal the pole position. One twenty-four nine six three is not enough. Hill has the pole by just three thousandths of a second. Schumacher will join him on the front row with Berger and Alesi third and fourth. Benetton screens off the line at the start of the formation lap and contravenes the FIA regulation Article 120 by overtaking the pole position man as the field comes round to form up for the race start.
As the cars take up position, Coulthard's engine stalls and the starter is aborted. Coulthard now having to start the race from the back of the grid. Irvine's Hart V10 seizes on the next formation lap before even reaching the grid for the start, while Brundle's Peugeot V10 lets go in a ball of flame as the lights switch to green. Up at the front, it's Hill who has got away in the lead with Schumacher second and pressing hard. On lap 13, it's announced that Schumacher will receive a five-second penalty for his antics on the formation lap. Lap 21, and the German is shown the black flag and repeatedly on lap 22 and 23. Not in the computer. Never. That's what Never. the marshal said. It's a stop and go penalty. Did he see the paper or did he say that, Roland? No. That's why, no, honestly, that's why I didn't come in. It was in the paper. No, it wasn't, sir. Honestly, it wasn't. Despite the verbal protestations of its team, Schumacher has to come in for a five-second stop-go penalty. The team showing him the ensign on his pit board on lap 25, and the German actually coming in at the end of lap 27. All this is good news for Hill and the Williams team, as his lead stretches to around 20 seconds once Schumacher is back in the race. As the laps count down towards the chequered flag, Hill and Coulthard run nose-to-tail formation, although the Scot is one lap down. Hill leads, Schumacher is second, Elisi third, Hakkinen fourth, Barrichello fifth, and Coulthard sixth. It's a dream come true for Damon. Best day of my life. My father never won it. And I'd like to say that it's some sort of indication that I feel and it's I don't know quite why it happened, but I mean, it's just a dream come true that I won the, won the British Grand Prix. And uh, I feel like that has completed the, the little hole that my father left in his record. And I'm sure that he'll be delighted. And uh, I think it's a wonderful thing. I have really to make a big compliment to David to win here in front of the home Grand Prix. It's something special. Uh, thanks, Michael. <laughs> Schumacher finds himself with a two-race ban and disqualification from the British Grand Prix following his formation lap contravention and his ignoring of the black flag. It's a major blow to the championship leader's title aspirations. Hakkinen and Barrichello receive one race suspended bans for this incident at the last corner on the last lap at Silverstone. Michael Schumacher appeals against his two-race ban. The hearing will take place after Belgium. He does run the risk of having his sentence increased by the appeal, but the pressure for him to race at home is intense. For every driver, the most important and the most emotional race is always the home run free. Plank makes its debut at Hockenheim in the final round of changes to be instituted by the FIA in 1994. The 10mm thick, 300mm wide device has the effect of raising the ride height, thus reducing downforce. Rear wing dimensions are also reduced. In Friday morning's free practice, Berger's engine lets go in a big way and Gerhard loses control of the car on his own oil. The teams have to keep a close eye on the wear of the planks. There is an allowable wear tolerance of 10%, that's just one millimeter. Schumacher's Benetton is not ideally suited to the long Hockenheim straights, but in front of his home crowd, he would give his all in qualifying. Early in the final qualifying session, Hakkinen has a big off at the first corner. The fin is unharmed. Fourth quickest in Friday afternoon's qualifying session in just one run, Jean Alesi makes use of the new V12 first use at Silverstone to record 1 minute 44.012 and claim pole position on his first flying lap of Saturday afternoon. With these split times showing an improvement on his second flying lap, things are looking good until the engine cover parts company with the car in spectacular fashion. Williams have a new FW16B for Hockenheim and Hill is fastest on Friday but fails to improve on Saturday, dropping to third. Schumacher would need all the luck a patriotic crowd could bestow to achieve a front row starting position, but it isn't enough. Fourth, Alesi is still quickest, but you can never underestimate Gerhard Berger. I was pushing like hell in this lap. <laughs> and I was... In one corner I went white because I braked too late. I lost a little bit time there, otherwise it was just a perfect lap, you know. Sometimes you just get these things together. I mean, I was pushing even in the last lap and it was a bit slower than this lap. It was just right. It was in the tire field right. And 
you know, it's just one of these days where you get everything together. The perfect lap and pole position, nearly half a second quicker than John Alesi. It's the first all-Ferrari front row since Prost de Mansell in Portugal nearly four years ago. As Berger and Alesi get cleanly away at the front, there's mayhem in the middle of the pack and further confusion at the first corner. Zanardi is out, Herbert, Irvine and Barrichello are out, Martin is out, Alboreto, Blundell is out, De Cesaris and Frensen are out, Hagenen's out, ten cars are out by the first corner. On board with Katayama on the way down to the first chicane, Alesi's electrics expire, the Frenchman pulling off the racing line towards retirement. Already pulling well clear at the front, Berger leads with the nose of Schumacher's Benetton pushed right up under the rear wing of the Austrian. the start finish line for the first time they do so to a mass of waved yellows Coulthard arrives in the pits immediately followed by Damon Hill the former with deranged front wings from the first corner accident and Hill with damaged suspension after being caught by Katayama's Tyrrell at the first chicane Berger still leads and Schumacher still presses and an unfortunate Katayama spins out of third place with his throttle having stuck open. Still, Schumacher cannot find a way past Berger. Lap 15, Jos Verstappen makes his first scheduled pit stop and things go dramatically wrong. Somehow, unbelievably, no one is critically injured. The young Dutchman freeing himself from the car. Lap 20, Berger comes in for his one scheduled fuel tire stop. Seconds later, Schumacher is in and this is not in his schedule. Engine failure is the cause and Schumacher retires from a race for the first time this year. So Berger enjoys a huge lead from Olivier Panis and Eric Bernard in the two Ligiers, now running second and third respectively. Their newfound form, courtesy of Renault Horsepower and the carnage at the start of the race. The chequered flag can't come soon enough for Lauda, Alessi and Tote on the pit wall. Probably not for Berger either, as the only thing standing between him and Ferrari's first win in 58 races could be mechanical gremlins. They don't, he does it, and Ferrari's first win since Prost in Spain 1990 is hugely popular. The two Ligiers come in second and third, delighting Cesare Fiorio. After the race, Berger says he could have won even without Schumacher's retirement. I was in trouble, but uh, I could keep him behind. I was just once in a dangerous position, once he was alongside me, but I could block it. And uh, so I was just able to keep him in front and in the back, but I was on the limit. Mika Hakkinen will be replaced in Hungary by Philippe Alio following the stewards' decision to ban him for one race, laying the blame for the first corner accident firmly at the feet of the young Finn. Another view of the Benetton pit fire at Hockenheim, this time from the rear three-quarter, and it's plain to see how close things came to becoming a major accident had not the fire extinguisher carrying mechanics acted so quickly. Jos Verstappen appears remarkably calm after the event.
Hungara Ring's slippery surface and the new lower downforce regulations produce more than 50 spins during practice and qualifying. Despite a spin on Friday, Hill emerges from qualifying with second spot on the grid, six tenths away from pole position for more than a second clear of third place Coulthard. Schumacher unsurprisingly takes his fourth pole of the year, but spins himself on his way to achieving it. For once, it's Hill that gets the better start over Schumacher. But the German simply drives around the outside of the Williams into the first corner to snatch the lead. Coulthard is third, Berger fourth, Katayama, Irvine and Barrichello all fighting for fifth. It cannot and doesn't last as the two Jordans and the Tyrrell of Katayama have a coming together whilst fighting over the same bit of tarmac at turn two. All three are instant retirements. One third distance and Martin Brundle tries unsuccessfully to outbreak Mark Blundell for fifth place. By now Schumacher has a comfortable lead from a frustrated hill in second, dropping back all the time with traffic. Lap 26, Verstappen makes his first pit stop since Hockenheim. Uh, no problems with the first pit stop. Uh, just like I had the, the, the visor was closed. And, uh, yeah, we did a normal pit stop, I would say it worked very well. In Hungary, all the teams have new safety clothing and headgear as an extra precaution during refueling stops. Lap 60 and David Coulthard is defending third place against a resolute Martin Brundle when things go wrong. The only casualty is some Scottish pride. With the race in the back, Hill being a long way back in second and Brundle third, Schumacher slows to allow Verstappen to unlap himself and have a chance to snatch third from Brundle. Schumacher's tally is now seven victories from ten starts in 94. Hill takes his fourth second place of the year, and it's Jos Verstappen who takes third. He explains how. I was fourth in the fourth position, and then the last lap, I could see Brando, and he slowed really down. So then on halfway the lap, I passed him, and I must say I was really, really happy. And I really need to thank Mike that he didn't pass me and then could make another lap. More controversy surrounds the Benetton team following the Verstappen pit fire at Hockenheim. The team is summoned to appear before the World Motorsport Council on October 19th to explain why a fuel filter was removed from the refueling rig. If found guilty, it's in the power of the council to exclude Benetton from the championship. Belgian Philippe Adams will make his Grand Prix debut at Spa for Lotus, replacing Zanardi. Philippe Alio moves from McLaren duties in Hungary to La Russe in Belgium. He replaces Olivier Beretta. The classic Eau Rouge of spa franco is no longer. For this year's race, a new, much tighter chicane is now in place. Seems so often the case at Spa for the Belgian Grand Prix, the weather is wet and it's Friday afternoon session that will ultimately decide the grid for Sunday's race. Damon Hill is unable to gain maximum benefit from his Renault engine in such conditions, but goes third fastest with a time of 2 minutes 21.681 seconds. Typically, a Lacey is one of the first to have a crack with slicks on a drying track and is faster by quite a margin until badly balked by Brundle on his last time lap. The Frenchman is therefore fifth and furious with the Englishman. Yeah, Rubens Barrichello has shown his wet weather prowess in the past, most notably at Donington in 93. He too opts for slicks and goes fastest with a lap of 2 minutes 21.163.
Schumacher is another to take advantage of slicks on Friday afternoon, but a spin on the fastest of his few laps would see him second fastest. On Saturday, there is no chance to run on slicks, and Barrichello sits out the final qualifying session with his manager and the Jordan team. Alessi, Schumacher, Hill, Coulthard and others try in vain to depose the young Brazilian. Alessi ends up fastest of the Saturday runners, but he's four seconds shy of Barrichello's pole time. I know that there are people trying to, to win the championship, and I'm not going to uh, be in front of them. If they come to overtake me, they will do, there will be no problem. So I just want to do my race and try to finish on the podium. This is Barrichello and the Jordan team's first Grand Prix pole position. Unfortunately for Barrichello, but not for the Williams and Ferraris, race day is sunny and dry. In the short run-up to La Sauce hairpin, Barrichello manages to hold the line and take the lead on the exit. Down to Eau Rouge, it's Schumacher second, fast starting a Lacey third and Hill fourth with Verstappen and Coulthard fifth and sixth. Into Lake Combe at the top of the hill, Schumacher outdrags the Jordan and takes the lead around the outside. And by the end of the first lap, Barrichello is down to third. At the end of lap two, Alessi's engine expires. Jean is having an incredibly frustrating season at Ferrari, constantly being hampered with mechanical failures. What does he have to do to change his luck? The atmosphere in the Williams garage is strained as Hill makes his first stop on lap 12, rejoining down in fourth just behind Barrichello. Lap 13 and Coulthard makes his first stop. It's quicker than Hills and he gets back out just in front of his teammate. So the order is Schumacher, Barrichello, Coulthard and Hill. Lap 19, Schumacher makes an uncharacteristic error. and it's Barrichello's turn, but he's not so lucky as he skates off at the fast downhill entry to Pouin. Lap 37, Coulthard waits Hill past after receiving a radio message to call into the pits to have his rear wing checked out. It's the first of a number of problems to beset the young Scotsman. Coulthard talks us through. I was running strongly in second place and then I had uh, the team called me in because uh, they thought there was maybe a problem with the rear wing. It was okay so I went back out and then we jammed in fourth gear so you know, I'm disappointed because I thought now I get on the podium here so when I braked I couldn't slow down enough and I've apologised to Mark because it was totally my fault. The number two Williams finishes fifth behind Verstappen fourth, Hacken and third and Hill second, unable to do anything about catching the winner, but for the first time in 94, Michael Schumacher. Belgium marks the return of McLaren Peugeot to the podium for the first time since Monaco in May. One can't help feeling sorry though for Barrichello, and what might have been had the weekend stayed damp. As it was, in the dry, he looked good for a podium finish. After the race, yet more controversy for Schumacher as he's disqualified for an undersized plank which the Benetton team claims is a result of this spin on lap 19. The race win is therefore awarded to Damon Hill. The International Court of Appeal upholds the two-race ban imposed on Schumacher for ignoring the black flag at the British Grand Prix. He'll therefore miss the Italian and Portuguese Grand Prix. At a meeting of the FIA World Motorsport Council in Paris, Benetton's fuel rig tampering charge is brought forward and McLaren is in the dock over the use of a fully automatic upcharge device. Both are acquitted. JJ Leto will substitute for Schumacher at Monza and Estoril. Alessandro Zanardi gets his Lotus seat back from Philippe Adams for Monza. 
Yannick Delmas takes over the second LaRousse alongside Eric Comas. Carl Benlinger attends his first Grand Prix since his crash in practice at Monaco. It's long faces at Benetton without Michael Schumacher, but Stappen qualifies 10th, Leto 20th. With Schumacher banned for the next two races, Hill has the opportunity to narrow the title race to a one-point margin. The pressure for wins is intense. He qualifies third with 1 minute 24.158. Teammate Coulthard qualifies fifth, 0.35 slower. Johnny Herbert has a new lighter and more powerful Mugen Honda V10 engine for Monza and it transforms the ill-handling Lotus 109. The man from Mugen never realized how many friends he's got as Johnny puts the car in full spot for Sunday's race with a lap of 1 minute 24.374. Olivier Panis is impressively quick in the Ligier, he's sixth fastest. Ferrari comes to Monza having won at Hockenheim and the Tafosi have come to see win number two. Berger says the ball rolling with a front row time of 1 minute 23.978. Now it's Alesi's turn, quickest in Friday afternoon's qualifying session, quickest during Saturday's free practice. He has every chance of claiming his first pole position at the 81st attempt. Happy to beat uh, my teammate because <laughs> he he did uh, his maximum and uh, I'm quicker. <laughs> like usual. But Damon Hill is a man on a mission. I think we're well poised to uh, spoil the party tomorrow. I'd say worry if I were you. If you want to win the race tomorrow. Sunday starts badly for Ferrari. In the morning warm-up session, Berger has a huge off at the Variante della Rogia. Sylvester Stallone is in town and flies into Monza to get a closer look at the world of Formula One. Like, yeah. Don't hurt my feet. Yeah. Don't hurt my feet. Hey, come on. I just had my nails done. You can tell the car. Jean Alesi is joined on the front row by his teammate Gerhard Berger, shaken but not stirred after his morning excursion. down to the first chicane and Lacey emerges just ahead of Berger, Hill, Herbert and Chaos. Irvine locks up and knocks Herbert into a spin taking out the Ligier of Panis and Coulthard's Williams. With much of the field caught up in a traffic jam the decision is taken to stop the race. Coulthard rushes back for the spare Williams. At the restart, again, a Lacey gets away first from Berger, Hill, Coulthard and Hakkinen. And again, there are problems at the first chicane, albeit this time involving Verstappen, Zanardi and Morbidelli, and of a much less serious nature. The 
Verstappen limps back to the pits and retirement without completing a lap. In the early laps, Alessi simply disappears, building a 10-second cushion to second-placed Berger. Lap 13, Herberts races over the spare car's old spec Mugen expires. Herbert still fuming over Irvine's do-or-die manoeuvre at the first start. Lap 14, John Alessi makes his first scheduled stop and the gearbox fails as he tries to leave his pit. The luckless Alessi is livid and, more importantly, out of the race. With Alessi gone, Berger now leads from Hill and Coulthard. Further back and falling away from the leading trio, Hakkinen is fourth and Frentzen fifth. Lap 24 and Berger makes his one scheduled stop, but is delayed in rejoining as Panis pulls in for his stop, losing the Austrian valuable time and the lead of the race. Lap 29, Hill leads with Coulthard shadowing his every move in second, Berger runs in third and Hakkinen fourth. On the last lap, the order is unchanged, with only the parabolica between the leaders and the chequered flag. But still, it's enough to rob Coulthard of a certain second as he runs out of fuel and drops to six. For Hill, though, it's an important ten points to move him closer to Schumacher in the chase for the title. I was really looking forward to having David on the rostrum and having a, a Williams 1-2, and it's uh, unfortunate that, uh, that uh, we didn't get, uh, get that result. But, uh, We've got, that's one down of the, uh, of the two races where Mike is away, that's one down, one to go, and uh, it's terrific, absolutely fantastic result. Katayama was charging all the way behind me, <clears throat> all the way through the race, but he was planning to do fuel stops, and I was doing a one fuel stop, which, uh, which was excellent, and, and it was good, excellent race. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Eddie Irvine receives a one-race ban suspended for three races. The stewards assessing that Irvine's speed on the approach to the first chicane was excessively high and caused an avoidable accident. Philippe Adams will be having another go in a Lotus at Estoril in Portugal. He lost control of his car and I decided to keep going to get the lap time and, and he came back onto the track and uh, hit, my, hit my car and my car turned over and it was quite interesting but um, I, I fortunately was not hurt which was the, um, it's a big relief. Portugal, round 13 of the 16 round FIA Formula One World Championship. A memorial is unveiled to commemorate the late Ayrton Senna.
a seu afastamento para Bólica Sena. Já batizada com o seu nome, logo após o seu impedido... Sena's girlfriend is present at the ceremony. A razão do local escolhido é a forma do circuito pelo grande campeão que aqui que é esse. Gerhard Berger is on pole position, one tenth in front of Damon Hill. Coulthard is third, Akinen fourth, Alesi fifth, and Katayama sixth. The two Benettons of Verstappen and Leto are tenth and fourteenth. Berger makes full use of his pole position as Coulthard gets the jump on Hill to take second. Further back, Barrichello goes around the outside of Frensen to take sixth. The order at the end of lap one is Berger, Coulthard, Hill, and Macy, Hakkinen, and Barrichello. It doesn't last. Lap 7 and Berger is out with gearbox pump failure. Lap 18, Coulthard comes in for the first of two scheduled stops. Lap 19, Hill is in for his first of two. Coulthard leads just ahead of Hill. Lap 28, Coulthard is trapped behind Comas and runs wide onto the marbles. Hill dives to the inside and takes the lead. Lap 39, and Lacey comes up to lap the Simtech of David Brabham, another non-finish. Laps 46 and 47 see a flood of second stops in the pit lane. Mark Blundell, Eddie Irvine, Olivier Panish, Mika Hakkinen, Jos Verstappen, Michele Alboreto. and Gianni Morbidelli. With all the stops over by lap 50, Hills first and goes on to win. Coulthard is second and gets his first podium finish. Hakkinen is third for the second race in succession. Rubens Barrichello is fourth. Hill's win brings him within one point of Schumacher in the Drivers' Championship. Absolutely, completely and utterly delighted because I knew that we had a good car here and a good engine and the whole package was good, but you're asking a lot from reliability and, and all the luck factors that uh, can't be accounted for. Now we've got a, a fantastic platform from which to challenge in the last few races. It's Coulthard's last race for Williams in 1994 and a fitting result both for him and his mechanics. I was praying here every lap when I was counting down to the finish that something would happen and I'm very happy to be here for, in my last race for Williams. This really is for all my mechanics who haven't had a podium this year and they've had a terrible year. So this is for them for having a the faith even when I was having some bad races. <laughs> I don't know whether my radio was on or off when I pulled it down that. I was talking to you and I wasn't sure. Jordan, thanks very much. Shift it. Oh, I, thought, I was really worried that something was going to happen. In a shock move, Herbert joins Ligier and Eric Bernard moves the opposite way to join Zanardi, who's back in the place of Adams. Hideki Noda joins LaRousse. And Mimo Schiaparella joins Simtek. Bigger news is that Mansell will partner Hill for the remainder of the season. Most exciting is that Hill and Schumacher are now head-to-head -head for the championship with three races remaining. It's all to play for at the European Grand Prix in Jerez.
Hill dominates the qualifying times on Friday, but Frensen is a surprise second quickest with Schumacher down in third. It's not his own driving, but that of others giving Damon most cause for concern. Saturday, slightly cooler conditions than on Friday. Nigel Mansell improves on his Friday time by one and a half seconds and moves up from sixth to third for Sunday's race. But the top two grid positions are destined for Hill and Schumacher. Who gets the pole will be decided by 2 p.m. local time. Schumacher takes it with a lap of 1 minute 22.762 versus Hill's 1 minute 22.892, a difference of just over one tenth of a second. the start and in comparison to his usual getaways so does Schumacher allowing Hill to snatch the lead on the run into the first corner at the end of lap one Hill leads Schumacher as second Frenson third Barrichello fourth Berger fifth and Mansell sixth Lap two, Mansell passes Berger, and on lap six, he goes past Barrichello into fourth. Next up is this man, Frenson. <laughs> lap eight, Brundle's engine expires. Mansell is balked by a slowing Noda and Barrichello is back up to fourth. A long way in front now, Hill still has Schumacher matching his every move. Lab 15, Schumacher pits for the first of three planned stops. Mansell pits for a new nose, courtesy of Noda's gearbox. Lap 18, Hill pits for the first of two planned stops. Hill's stop is longer, allowing Schumacher to take the lead. Hill rejoins in second. Lap 33, Frenson makes his one and only fuel tire stop. Hakkinen moves up a place to third. With Irvine in fourth. Lap 33, the Benetton team prepare for Schumacher's second stop. Hill makes his second stop. Lap 45, Mansell stops to have a loose front wing end plate bolt seen to. And on lap 47, he spins into retirement in a gravel trap. Schumacher takes a comfortable eighth win of the season. Hill finishes second and Hackerton third. Schumacher's championship title chase is back on course, but it's not over yet with two races left and Schumacher on 86 points to Hills 81. I'm back in the position where you left two races ago. It's, it's, it's the best thing that happened. 
the whole weekend was, was great. It started with a football match, which my team won. It's, it went further with uh, pole position on Saturday after not nice qualifying on Friday where we had a little problem, but it worked out in, uh, in Saturday's qualifying. And then uh, winning the race by not just a little margin, by a big margin. The Williams team suffered fuel gauge problems at the European Grand Prix, which led to a change to the race strategy. Hill had to be called in five laps sooner than planned, and this may have contributed to his slower pace after his first stop. Mercedes end months of speculation by announcing its deal with McLaren for 1995. Eddie Jordan immediately picks up the Peugeot Works engine deal for his team next season. JJ Leto will partner Frenson at Suzuka as De Cesare seems certain to retire from Formula One. Mika Salo joins Lotus alongside Zanardi for the Japanese Grand Prix. Frenchman Frank Lagosse will partner Olivier Panis at Ligier for the last two races of the year. Johnny Herbert is drafted in at Benetton alongside Schumacher to help strengthen their manufacturer's championship title aspirations. do with the win at Suzuka if he harbours serious hopes for the championship. He's second quickest in Friday qualifying, just under half a second shy of Schumacher's provisional pole time of 1 minute 37.209. Heimtel Frensen is third fastest, less than a tenth behind Hill. Mansell is fourth on 1 minute 37.768. Saturday is wet and the grid will be decided on Friday's times. With a 60% chance of rain for the race, Schumacher's thoughts on how grippy or not the track may be give some indication of what we can expect. Of course, there are certain areas where it keeps the water and the water doesn't go away. But uh, it is quite grippy, I would say, and it's all right. But if it is heavy rain, then it's going to be very difficult. Damon Hill is happy, wet or dry. It would be a mistake to be overconfident. I think that things are getting better for us over the, the weekend. I'm on the front row and that's very important. And um, if I can make it to the first corner first, then I think that I'm in, in very good shape. Schumacher makes a lunge to head off Hill as the field squirms off the line. For anyone other than Schumacher with a clear road ahead, all they will see is a white wall of water in front of their eyes. Damon Hill slots into second place behind Schumacher, just far enough away to catch glimpses of the track ahead. Three, with Leto and Noda already out before completing a single lap, as well as rapidly deteriorating weather, Katayama slams his Tyrrell into the pit wall on the start-finish straight. Herbert's Benetton is in the wall on the other side of the track. And Taki Inui just manages to avoid Katayama's car as he performs a similar pirouette. It's enough to warrant the safety car and give the marshals an opportunity to clear the wreckage. The 
remainder of the field holds formation for seven laps behind the safety car. End of lap nine, the safety car pulls into the pit lane and the battle is resumed. <laughs> lap ten, Lagorce's race ends in an accident at the first corner with Martini and Alboreto spins off in sympathy moments later. Lap 13, Morbid Deli has a big accident at the Denier Curve. Lap 14, Brundle goes off at the same corner, colliding with one of the marshals, who fortunately suffers no more than a broken leg, but it's enough to bring out the red flag. Some of the drivers are in favour of abandoning the race, others want to continue, views are mixed. Hill throughout sits in his car, helmet on, concentration unbroken and ready to continue. So the race will not start? Yes. The stewards declare that the race will be restarted and run over 37 laps, with the result being the aggregate of the two parts. In addition, for reasons of safety, the restart will be a rolling one behind the safety car. Rolling start. That way, it's the safest way. Schumacher is ready when the safety car pulls off and leaves Hill a bit further behind than he might wish. In third and fourth are Alessi and Mansell, the latter being held up, but he's unable to outdrag the more powerful Ferrari where it matters. Five laps into the restart, Schumacher is in for fuel and tyres, his team having decided on a two-stop strategy. Schumacher's stop gives Hill the lead and a cushion of 17 seconds. Schumacher appears to be stuck behind Hakkinen's McLaren at this stage. With Hakkinen running fifth, one would expect the Benetton to pass easily. Lap 25, Hill makes his one and only scheduled stop, but only three tyres are changed as the right rear wheel refuses to come off. He rejoins behind the Alessi Mansell third fourth place battle, which shows no sign of abating. Lab 36, and although Schumacher's Benetton is behind Hill, Schumacher is in fact leading the race on aggregate timing. Lap 40, Hill is back in front as Schumacher dives for the pits to make the second of his scheduled stops. It's a quick stop, seven seconds, but by the time he rejoins, he is 15 seconds behind Hill with nine laps left to the finish. 
Seven laps to go. Hill leads Schumacher by 12 seconds. Six laps to go. The gap is now 10.1. Five laps to go. It's down to 8.3 seconds. Four laps, seven seconds. Three laps, 5.2 seconds. Two laps, 4.2. One lap, 2.4. It all comes down to the last lap, Hill or Schumacher. Hill takes the chequered flag, but still we must wait for the gap to Schumacher. As the German crosses the line, it's Hill who wins. Still enjoying their duel for third, Mansell manages to squeeze past Alessi at the chicane on the last lap. He takes third on the road, but on aggregate, Alessi is the final man on the podium. Schumacher is the first to extend his hand to Hill after the race. While Mansell and Alessi have genuinely enjoyed a classic clean tussle, it's an extremely satisfying moment for Damon. It was flat out all the way. It was. It was. I knew that I couldn't take any. Uh, I couldn't be cautious. I knew that I really just could not drive any with any amount of conservatism. So I was really sort of throwing caution to the wind and uh, in an effort to stay ahead of Michael. And uh, that's so satisfying to, to race like that. But um, uh, it really does uh, mean a lot to to end up in first position at the end of the race. For Australia, Jean-Denis Delatraz joins Hideki Noda at LaRousse. Peter Sauber confirms a one-year exclusive deal for the new Ford z tech R engine in 1995. Not since 1986 has the championship been decided in Australia, and then it was between Prost, Mansell and Piquet. Prost won. Who will it be this time, Hill or Schumacher? I think uh, Michael Schumacher. I'm sure Michael Schumacher. The problem is I can't see into the future. Tough fight, but Michael will take it in the end. Hill. Damon Hill. I think Michael. Michael Schumacher will win. You have not, uh, you know, the crystal ball. So Damon Hill. Piquet. Because he's the quickest. I will. Oh, oh. Damon. I think he deserves it. Damon Hill. Australians know a thing or two about Formula One, and the locals have their own views. Damon Hill will win the world championship. <laughs> Ferrari, the best. Schumacher. Um, Hill. Hill, definitely. Schumacher. Schumacher will win it. Schumacher. <laughs> Schumacher will win the world championship. Hill. Schumacher. Damon Hill. Damon Hill, not a lorry. Father and son team. Nigel. Hopefully he will come first, he'll all come second, and the other guy will come third. What an event. Mansell is quickest in Friday's official qualifying with Schumacher second and Hill third, the young German having a sizeable off at the end of the session. Congratulations. Hakkinen puts his McLaren Peugeot up there, fourth fastest. Barrichello is fifth, little over a tenth quicker than teammate Eddie Irvine in sixth. 
As in Japan, Saturday's qualifying session is spoiled by rain, and it's the Friday times which will determine the grid for the race. So Mansell is on pole, looking relaxed and as quick as ever. Well, I mean, this track is very difficult, and you've got to explore the, the limits of the envelope, especially when you're driving against two great drivers that we have on the side of us. And they don't uh, leave anything to chance. And uh, yeah, I chose the escape road a number of times, purely and simply that if I try to go around the corner, I probably might have. I might have ended up going more. It's a bit quicker, you should try it tomorrow. <laughs> that is a bit slower. Mike. Schumacher makes the best start as Mansell gets too much wheel spin and drops to third behind Hill. Hakkinen is fourth until Mansell has a minor excursion which allows Hakkinen and Barrichello through. By lap 10, Hill and Schumacher are already lapping the La Russa of Delatraz. Hill maintaining a consistent gap of around 1.5 seconds to the Benetton in front. Lap 13, Blundell overshoots and slides across the runoff, managing to avoid contact with the tyre wall as Johnny Herbert retires with gearbox problems. Lap 14, Damon Hill is now just seven tenths behind Schumacher. Mika Hakkinen's McLaren is third, Mansell's moved up to fourth, Barrichello's fifth and Jean Alesi sixth. Lab 15, Eddie Irvine spins out of seventh at the end of the 190 mile per hour Decatville Terrace. Lap 18, Schumacher and Hill pit together. They arrive separated by less than a second and they depart the same. Hill proceeds to try every which way in his attempts to pass Schumacher, as does Mansell with Hakkinen. And Lacey is lucky not to hit anything with this errant spin. He gathers it up quickly and doesn't even lose a place. Mansell is in for his first stop. Lab 28, Hakkinen comes in and so too does Barrichello. It's the latter who gets out first. Barrichello then runs wide over the curves and it's enough to let Hakkinen through before Alesi's Ferrari whistles past the Brazilian and the Finn in one deft move. Lap 36, an error by Schumacher triggers the conclusion to the 1994 World Drivers and Manufacturers Championships.
No words can describe the feelings that Damon Hill must have now. A marshal gives Schumacher news of Hill's retirement. This is the moment he knows he has become champion. The Benetton team are well aware. But it still takes a few moments for Schumacher to realise what he's achieved. I pushed him very hard all the way. It was a, it was a terrific race. And uh, all I can say is that uh, it's over now. and. Uh, it's, it's a bit of a, an empty feeling, but I think I gave him a good run for his money. And uh, he certainly was feeling the pressure because uh, he ended up falling off the road. Mansell now leads the Australian Grand Prix from Gerhard Berger, who has considerable trouble passing Frenson Sauber. Marichello receives a 10-second stop-go penalty for exceeding the pit lane speed limit. Hakkinen receives the same penalty for the same offence. <laughs> Lap 77, Hakkinen suffers brake failure. to go, Mansell still leads, just doing enough to fend off Berger's Ferrari, which is in second. Brundle is in third, Barrichello fourth, Panis fifth, and Alacy down a lap in sixth. <laughs> Nigel Mansell wins his first Australian Grand Prix. Williams win the Constructors' Championship. An elated Mansell probably knows better than anyone how Damon Hill is feeling. At the post-race press conference, he has nothing but praise for the job that Hill has done this year. I've got to say, first of all, what a fantastic job he's done. I mean, he brought the championship alive. He, he won those races, which he had to, and uh, I don't know the outcome of it. Obviously, he's lost the championship, but I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm for one very proud, and the whole country should be. He's, he's, he's done fabulous. To see. Michael did a brilliant job all the year, not many mistakes, and I think he really deserved it. I'm sorry about Damon. I think Damon, as Michael said, showed, the, especially the last two races, that he also is able to do a, a great job. He also is able to win the championship, and it's always like this. One has to win it and one lose it, but he's going to have still time to win it and he's going to do it. Michael Schumacher is Germany's first ever Formula One world champion. He may have made it look easy, but it's been a tough year for him too. The season has been started quite well, I would say, in Brazil. Even Aida, it was a, a good race, and then uh, we came up to Imola. And what, there, what happened there is, is just a... When I talked about nightmare in the, uh, before, then I have to say it's, it's in the other direction, and all of us know what kind of feelings we had to make about this, about this in particular for Aiton, but as well for Roland, and as well for Carl, what happened in Monte Carlo. For me, it was always clear that I'm not going to win the championship, and it's Aiton who is going to win the championship, but he hasn't been there for the last races, and I'd like to take this championship and give it to him.